everybody. This is Jersey Drozd, and this is a new video for you where I'm going to let you tag along while I color one of my He-Man and the Masters of the Universe character reimaginings that I've been doing. I learned some new techniques in doing this, uh, particu particularly in regards to scanning uh, pieces that I've inked with the Pentel color brush pen, like this piece of Stinkor from the Masters of the Universe. Um... And I'll, I'll, I'll just let you watch along as I scan it, clean it up, and color it. And I'll show you some new techniques that I picked up that are really fun. So first, I've got my scanning software open, and I'm scanning it full color, 300 dpi. Now, normally, in the old days, I would have scanned this in black and white in order to get rid of those blue lines, but I picked up a neat trick that I'm going to show you. So first, I'm going to scan. Oh, i got to click the button again. There we go. So I'm going to scan this guy. And thankfully, I got a new scanner that works a lot faster than the old one I used to have. Okay, that is scanned. So let's get out of my scanning software. And let's open up the image that has been scanned. I'm uh, working in Adobe Photoshop CS4, by the way, for those who uh, are keeping track. And now we got to get rid of these blue lines. And for that, I go to my channels palette over in the right. And I'm going to select the blue channel. And see how that gets rid of the blue? If I go to all of them, there's the blue, clear as, clear as day. But when I just click the blue channel, the blue lines, for the most part, go away. Now, make sure to tab over my layers palette, because I'm going to use that in a second. I'm going to go to Image, Mode, Grayscale. Discard other channels? You bet. Now it's just a grayscale image. And as you can see, when I zoom in, that most of the blue is gone makes it a lot easier to color or uh, level balance this to get it to pure black and pure white. And for that, I go to Image Adjustments Levels. And for these He-Man reimaginings, I don't... I In, in past uh, Photoshop tutorials, I've, I've mentioned bringing these two arrows completely so they're touching. But I want to preserve some of the quality of the softer lines that you can get with the Pentel Color Brush Pen. So for that, I bring in the black a little bit. I don't bring in the white quite as much because there's not as much pencil line to, to get rid of. And just bring it in enough so that the blacks look pretty black. But I'm not worried about getting them perfectly crisp black for this. Um, and the reason why, I mean, if, if I was using the B-Pelt plugin, which you can see in some of my older tutorials on coloring, if I was using the B-Pelt plugin to flat, I would not do it this way, but I'm going to hand flat this, and sh I'll show you how I do that. So that looks passable. Looks pretty okay. So I'm going to hit okay on that. And so now I'm going to clean it up. And for that, I'm going to use either the pencil tool or the brush tool. It doesn't matter. Um, and then by holding down the option key with my pencil tool, I can select the white, and I can just quickly scrub out any imperfections on the page, maybe make a few minor adjustments to the inks. But for these, these are just character sketches, so I'm not going to worry about doing cleanup too much here. There we go. Yeah, and you just hold down the option key to sample whatever pixels you want while you have the pencil or brush tool selected. So option key, you see it turns into an eyedropper, click it, you'll notice my foreground color turns into that color. Option click on the white, foreground color, over in the tool palette on the left turns to white. So now I can scrub out little mistakes that I've made. Any schmutz that was on my scanner glass. And uh, looking pretty good. Not spotting any other horrific errors in the inking. So we're looking pretty good. So now, this is a trick that I've shown you before, but just uh, to go step by step, for the purposes of going step by step, I'm going to show you how to turn this into just black lines on a transparent background. For that, we go to our layers palette, double click on uh, the layer that says background, because we got to turn this into a layer after all. I'm going to name it line art. And now it is on its own layer. I'm going to go to my channels palette. And I'm going to go down here to that little dotted circle. When you hover over it, it says load channel as a selection. You tap on that, and now all the white pixels have been selected. Go back to my layers palette. Hit the delete key. I've deleted all the white. And go to select, deselect, or Apple D, Command D, uh, Control D. 
and then I'm going to lock the transparent pixels over in the layers palette right above the line art layer where it says lock. There's a little box with the checkered pattern in it. Click on that. That locks the transparent pixels for me now. So now I cannot paint anywhere uh, where you see the, uh, what is it, the, the checkered pattern. I can only paint on the lines. But we're going to color this now, so we need to turn this into a color image again. So for that, I'm going to go to image mode, RGB color. Now it's a color image. And now I'm going to add a layer. Drag that layer below line art. And I'm going to name this layer flats. And I'm going to start flatting. Now, uh, uh, for these particular redesigns, uh, it, it's helpful to have some color samples to go off of. And rather than make a swatch guide for each character, what I've done is I often will download an image of a He-Man, the He-Man figure that I want to use or that I'm trying to re reimagine, and I'll just sample from them. Now, I do use the eyedropper tool. You'll see me use this a lot. Uh, I showed you earlier that you can use the paintbrush tool and just option click to get the colors you want, but that'll only change your foreground color. If you grab the eyedropper tool and just click without holding down the option key, that changes your foreground color, but I can also option click with the eyedropper tool to create a background color. See how my background color changes? Watch the, watch over here in the tool palette. I'm going to option click with the eyedropper tool and it'll change the background color, which makes it a little bit, uh, it's a handy trick for switching back and forth very quickly between colors. So because I'm going to flat, I want to pick just like a base color and I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool and just start clicking around inside the lines like so. And you will notice, I'll show you in a second when I finish this trace, as I trace the Stinkor's face here. Well, I already accidentally completed that selection. You'll notice that I have anti-aliasing off. Um, this is something I've talked about before. Uh, it makes it easier to manage your flats later on, and I'll show you why in a second. If aliasing is on, it's going to put a slight fuzz around this, this selection line when I'm finished. Like when I fill it with a color, it'll have a slight haze to it, and this will make it absolutely crisp. Uh, whatever color I fill in here will be absolutely that color all the way up to the edge. Now, if I want to add to the selection, I just hold on the shift key and tap with my selection tool and continue the trace. I can let go of the selection key or the shift key once I've begun the selection. And fortunately with these He-Man redesigns, the line art is very bold, so it's very easy to trace. There's not a lot of detail on it. This kind of method is really tough for my traditional uh, comics pages. Now, I want to get rid of these eyes. There's a couple ways I can do that. I can hold down the Option key to do a subtraction selection, so I can chop out and just tap in there and trace out his eye, like so. Or I can go to quick mask mode and, oh, I think that's, I don't know where it is now in the menu, but I know that all I have to do is hit the Q key and that takes me to quick mask mode. And what I can do then is, as I've showed you before in past tutorials, whatever is clear is the area that's going to be selected. Whatever is pink or a light red, whatever you want to call it, is not selected. So now I can use the polygonal lasso tool to just trace without holding down the option key and close that and then I can go to edit fill and fill it now that area is not selected um, I use key commands a lot I have a key command on my Photoshop set to uh, shift F5 to do fills so you wouldn't have to go to that menu every time so this seems like a clumsier way but this does make it easier for me to see what I have selected and what I do not have selected so I'm filling in stink or sort of base skin tone here. And so you'll see me switch a lot back and forth between quick mask mode. And I'm taking care not to connect these two shapes. I want that line to be there in between. You'll see why a little bit later. Um, but basically I'm going to be using the magic wand tool a lot to select these colors when I edit them on a color layer. And, uh, I like to have the option to select one piece of his skin tone at a time. Some of you are wondering where are the stripes on Stinkor? Well, I didn't draw them in with ink. 
I'm going to do that entirely in color. And oh, and how I'm moving around uh, the the screen is if you, whatever tool you have, if you hold down the shift key, you'll see my icon changes from the uh, polygonal lasso to a hand, and you hold down the shift key and just drag, and it allows you to move around the page very quickly and easily. And so this method is actually a little bit, I don't know about you guys, but using the option and shift keys a lot in coloring when I'm working fast, uh, it can put some strain on my shoulder to have to keep switching with those keys with my left hand. So this method keeps my left shoulder from getting a little too hurt by uh, allowing my left arm to rest while my right arm does the selecting. So I don't have to keep holding on the shift key to make additional selections. Um, when you're working with the polygonal lasso tool, you can easily switch to the regular lasso tool by holding down the option key and dragging. And then you can do a freehand selection if you feel confident about selecting that way. I like using the polygonal lasso tool just because I like precision in my work. But when I get to the coloring phase and I'm editing the colors, you'll see that I'll, I'll use that option key trick a lot to switch between polygonal and regular lasso tool. But that, that's something that comes with time with confidence. I didn't always like doing it that way. Uh, when Oh, and by the way, I'm just deleting here. I make the selection, and then I hit the delete key to clear that. But when I was starting out in computer coloring, uh, I did not use the regular lasso tool very much at all, just because I didn't have the confidence of, of that hand-eye coordination. Or in, when I was first starting out, I didn't even have a graphics tablet, so it was really hard to get like a smooth arc for a shadow effect. Okay, so I've got... Two more selections to make to put his base skin tone down. And voila, hit the delete key. And to get out of quick mask mode, all you have to do is hit the Q key. And now that area is selected. This is the uh, base, if you go back into the toolbar, uh, the tool palette on the left. Uh, my foreground color is set to the base skin tone that I selected off of the Stinkor image that I downloaded from the internet. And so I'm going to hit Shift F5 to fill it. And there's the base skin tone. Now, if you look, you'll see that there's some weird gray lines around the ink lines when I first scanned Stinkor. Um, we can easily rectify that. There's just some like gray pixels in there. I can easily rectify that by deselecting. Um, that's that's just Command D. Uh, but we can fill in these the, these little ghost pixels with black by just selecting pure black from our picker and making sure that transparent pixels are locked. I'm going to go to Edit Fill, and there we go. Now all the pixels are absolutely black. We're going to do color holds on these in a little bit anyway, but just so that nobody's looking at it going like, oh, what's that all about? So, okay, so now I've got this first flat color. Now do I have to go through and manually trace all this stuff out too? No, it gets easier as you're flatting because all you have to do is command click. I'm going over to your layers palette. Command click on the layer, not the word, but the layer of flats, and it selects what I all of the areas that have been filled in with paint. So if I go to quick mask mode, you'll see, there we go. That's all selected. So I can just invert that selection, select, inverse. And now when I go to quick mask mode, look at this. Now there's all this area I don't have to trace on his armor. Well, I'm going to do these hoses first. Makes it easier to trace these parts, and it gets progressively easier as you flat. I'm going to get rid of that part because that's part of the armor there. And when we get to the doing the color holds, too, I found a really neat trick for doing that using the same technique, which you'll see in a little bit here. There's the hoses. And I think I will make this little box in the middle of his chest the same color. Even though his armor is all pretty much the same color, I'm going to put in some subtle variations in there. And I'm going to subtract from this selection here by holding down the Option key and then releasing it as soon as I made my first click. So I can add a different color to these little detailed bits that I put in his chest plate. Uh, 
Okay, so now we're going to go to Select Inverse again, and I've selected everything except the areas that I've traced. Shift F5 to fill. That's just on my Mac. It's going to be different for everybody's computer, uh, what key commands you have for fill. And now when I go out of Quick Mask, those areas are selected. Now let's get a base color for the tubes. I'm going to select one of the lighter oranges. Maybe not that light. Uh, that looks good. And then fill it in. Now remember, these are just flat colors. I'm not worried about getting the absolute perfect color just yet. So now all I have to do to, to uh, start tracing more areas is command click or control click on the layer again, and it selects everything that's been painted. Select, in, see, and I'll prove it to you by going into quick mask mode, see? And then you go to select inverse, or as it shows here, command shift I. Go back into quick mask mode, and now I can resume tracing his armor not worrying about having to trace around that area in the middle of his chest plate that I worked on a minute ago. I think I'm going to leave this middle part a different color too, just for some color variety. This may change when I get to the final coloring stage, but I'm just, as I'm thinking, and I'm going to make these little air tanks on his back the same color. And then Command Shift I to select inverse and then fill it in. And it looks like his armor has been selected. And hit the Q key again to leave quick mask. Let's select Stinkor's base armor color. And then fill it in. There we go. Now Command Shift again on the flats layer, just on the little icon of the layer again. Select inverse by hitting Command Shift I, quick mask mode, and now it's getting even easier to do these selections. Whoops. Now I don't have to be very careful at all about selecting this. Right? And I'm going to cut out that little gr uh, grill in the middle of his breathing apparatus here and make that a different color. And. I will make the tops of his air tanks the same color as that. And then select inverse with command shift I. Fill, hit the Q key to leave quick mask. I'm gonna select a slightly darker orange now. And fill it. And then we start all over again. We command click on the flats layer icon and then select inverse with uh, command shift or control shift I, Q for quick mask. And let's do, let's go back to one of the harder parts. I'm gonna do his gloves and boots now. And I'm gonna start by doing these cuff areas. Move over to the other one. And remember to scoot around, all you have to do is hold down the, sh uh, the space bar. And you can also, if you're like in the middle of a selection and you're worried about, well, am I getting in the right area? You can zoom in and zoom out by just holding down the um, command key or control key and the plus or minus key. So I'm in the middle of a selection, I stop, I'm like, am I in the right area? Com uh, command or control plus zooms in, command or control minus zooms out, even if you're in the middle of a selection. That makes it very handy when doing really tricky selecting in Photoshop. 
All right. So zooming out, I've got all my cuffs selected. I'm going to select inverse with command shift or control shift I. And then I'm going to fill, leave quick mask. And let's pick a slightly different orange just to keep the oranges distinct. Oh, actually, Stinkor had a very different glove color, didn't he? He did. All right, we're going to get that. It's like more of a red, isn't it? All right, so there's the cuffs. And if I want to select everything again, uh, Command or Control, click on the flats layer icon. I should save this really quick. This is the original scan that I did. I'm going to save this real quick because uh, I've already put some work into it. So, and, oh, it's going to take a little minute for my, my server to start up. I'm going to just put it on the desktop for now. So I'm going to call this Stinkor, and then the date. And save it as a Photoshop file. Don't need to embed the color profile, but I do want to preserve layers. There we go. Now I don't have to worry about losing what I've done so far. So where was I? Okay. All I had selected was the colors. Command or Control Shift I to select inverse. Go into quick mask mode. And let's finish the gloves and boots. Now here's where you can start using that trick where you hold down the option key to use the regular lasso tool because you don't have to be worried about being precise when you're editing in quick mask mode and there's a lot of areas already colored in. Now here it'd be trickier because there's a lot of areas where I got to be precise but because this area is not selected I can just work like that. Zoom out. I'm going to make the gloves a slightly different color than the boots for editing purposes. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, and let's make this a slightly darker red. And then command click on the layer again. Select inverse with command or control shift I, Q, uh, Q key to get back into quick mask mode. And then let's zoom in by holding down the command plus key. And now I can start editing these boots or flatting these boots. Whoops. That happens sometimes if you double click. If you double click while working on a selection with the polygonal lasso tool, it'll automatically complete the shape wherever you're wherever you are in the creation of that shape. So that's something to watch for is be slow and deliberate and click, click, click. See? I did it twice back accident. Click, 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 click. I did it again. I'm gonna use the option tool. That can get frustrating sometimes when you're working. Uh, and just a quick Command D, or rather Command Z to undo that that uh, polygonal lasso effect or choice or whatever you want to call it. So select inverse, shift, uh, rather do the fill, leave quick mask, and now I'm going to use an even slightly darker red doesn't have to be that much darker, but just enough. Now let's do his little furry underpants. Command, tap, or click on the flats layer. Select inverse. Quick mask mode. Zoom in. And see, this does get progressively faster as you build your flats. Select inverse. Fill. Leave. Uh, photo or leave quick mask mode and I can use the same color as the boots I think that's the same color as the underpants let's look oh it's a lighter orange for the underpants it's more like his armor but let's make it slightly darker than the armor so I can make these selections distinctly and then we got to do the belt so command click on the flats layer select inverse Q for quick mask mode and now I can be really sloppy I've selected that area. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask mode, and now I can use, I think his belt is more of the red. Yep, his belt is the red color. I'm going to use the red of his boots with the eyedropper tool. Fill it in. 
Now only a few more details to go. Let's get that eye color. And it looks like it's just like a bright yellow, but I can I can sample it. Eyedropper tool, command click on the layer, the flats layer, select inverse, quick mask. And now just a quick zoop. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, fill. Now let's get the last details. We get these areas, his little breathing apparatus and little uh, switches on his chest plate. Select inverse, quick mask, and select these areas like so. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, and I'm going to choose a gray color. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to start with an orange. I'm going to use an orange as gray to keep these color harmonies. And fill. There we go. He has been flatted. I'm going to save real quick, but I don't have the white stripes on him yet. Well, that's easy enough to fix because he has white stripes going down his arms and down the middle of his head and around his eyes. So to do that, I'm going to deselect and I'm going to use my magic wand tool, making sure the anti-aliasing is off and contiguous is on. If contiguous is off, it'll select all the blacks. See that? Well, I guess I can leave it on or off for this, but if contiguous is on, it'll only select the areas that I tap. And, I'm, and I'm, I can add to those selection by shift clicking, holding on the shift key and clicking. But if you want to select that everything at once, everything that's that color on the document, or on the image, just shut off contiguous and it'll select all of the colors. Now I'm gonna go to quick mask mode and I'm gonna create the white stripes in just color with my lasso tool. And I'm gonna hold on the option key with the plug in the lasso tool to create the I don't really like the way that first side of the stripe went. I want it to be simpler. So I'm going to add to that on the outside. And then I'm going to leave cut out dark circles around his eyes. That's what the toy had. It takes some time to learn how to freehand like this in uh, with the graphics tablet, but it's something I'm confident you guys can all do if, if with a little bit of practice. I'm going to add to the selection. I'm going to add the stripes down the arm. You don't have to be very precise on the outside because that area is not selected at all. I'm going to do the same over here. And then i got to do the legs too, I think, because Stinkor doesn't... Oh, it doesn't look like he has stripes in the legs. Well, we'll leave those stripes off. All right, so then I'm going to select inverse with uh, Command or Control Shift I. Fill it in. Leave Quick Mask. And now I'm going to choose roughly white and fill it in. And there's the flatted image. And I'm going to save that real quick. So now I'm going to want to color this. I want to edit these colors. So for that, I'm going to duplicate the flats layer, duplicate layer, and we'll call this colors. And I'm leaving the flats layer there because this is going to make it easier to edit these colors as I work. So now I'm going to use the magic wand tool and I'll start with the skin tones, making sure contiguous is off. So I'm selecting them all. Let's go to Stinker and do some selecting of his colors. And option click with the eyedropper tool gives me a background color. And I'm first going to edit this color just a little bit. I'm going to make him, just to kind of marry all these different color harmonies, I'm going to brown up that black skin tone a little bit. Take it a little bit more towards the brown and fill that in. There we go. Now he's feeling a little bit more unified. And now I'm going to choose a highlight color, moving up just a little bit. And I've already got my background color. But I'm going to just be on the safe side. I'm going to warm that up too. And I'm going to use my gradient tool. Make sure that the radial gradient is selected. And I'm just going to drag it over a couple of the highlighted areas or the, the places where his body is protruding a little bit, you know, where it should be meeting the sunlight. And just drag a few quick gradients around there like that. See, so I start here, drag, release, and that adds a little bit of a soft, lighter gradient to that. Now I'm going to do the shadows, and that's why I, I use the eyedropper tool to select foreground and background, background colors, because I can easily switch by just tapping on this little arrow here. Now the darker color is my foreground color, if I try to paint with it. See? Undo. 
I'm going to go to quick mask mode. And I'm going to select my polygonal lasso tool. Zoom in. And I'm going to sort of trace out some shadows. And I'm even going to work a little bit shadow in there, too. Oops. And I'm actually going to shadow out the whole front of the leg there. Because I'm I, with all of these... He-Man redesigns. I'm always imagining my light source being roughly in the upper left of the image. Select inverse with Command or Control Shift I. Fill it in. Q to leave quick mask mode. And then I'm going to fill with... Oh, interesting. What happened there? Oh, I changed my opacity by accident. It, it, this can happen sometimes when you're using a lot of key commands. If you look over my layers palette, my colors palette has been set to a 50% fill. We'll just set that back to 100%. There we go. And so now I'm going to fill Shift F5. That's a little too dark. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to change this color, shadow color to a little bit lighter. And there we go. Deselect. Skin tones have been shaded. I'm going to save. And... I'm wondering if I need to do something with the white stripes as well. I think I do. So I'm going to go ahead and use the magic wand tool, select the whites, and I'm going to sample them with the eyedropper tool, sampling, sampling the foreground and background colors as the same. I'm going to edit the foreground color to be slightly like an orangish off-white. And then I'm going to zoom in. Just to put a little bit of shading there. Just to give it a little bit more, I don't know what you call it, volume. Just so it's not a completely flat color. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, and fill with the shading color. It's subtle, but, and perhaps it's too subtle. <laughs> Let's make it a little bit darker. There we go. A little bit better. Okay, time to move on to the armor. Sorry, guys, I had to get my cat out of the room. It was starting to jump up on my lap, and that would not do. So I'm going to start with the gloves. And see, this is why I made the gloves a different color than the boots. Just by changing it a little bit, it allows me to just select them without it get crossing over. Because if I would have, if these would have been the same color, then these would be selected too. And I just want to edit these for now. Using my eyedropper tool, I'm going to create a highlight. And then click on the background color to create a shadow. And now I grab my gradient tool. Just do a quick drag to lighten that up. Quick drag to lighten that up. Then grab my polygonal lasso tool. Go into quick mask mode. And I'm going to trace out a shadow. So you do have to understand a little bit about how the human form interacts with light, right? You have to understand like the three-dimensional shape of a person to be able to do good shadows. I'm not saying my shadows are great, but I mean there is some attention to how this shape would interact with light and how where the shadows would fall on it. And I'm just holding down the shift key to add to this selection. And then back out to make sure everything's selected that I want. Well, I think it would be neat to have a slight shadow on the cuffs of the gloves. Like so. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, and 
go over to my color picker and hit that little switchy arrow to change the background color to foreground color and fill not dark enough let's make it a little bit darker there we go cool all right now let's do the boots and since the boots aren't that much of a different color than the gloves when I did the flats, I'm going to use the same highlight and shadow colors, and it should match up pretty good. So quick drag, quick drag, and then I'm going to put in the shadow. Obviously, this is a very simplified technique, and it, depending on the kind of comic storytelling you do, you would want to use something, a very different style of coloring. I mean, that's one of the reasons we do Art and Story Supreme is that you can see how Kevin does it where he works in a more painterly style. This works for a more, tr like, uh, cartoon animation kind of style of coloring. And even for my stuff, this is a very simplified version. I, I usually work in a lot more detail than this when I'm coloring. Uh, yeah, that looks... Yeah. I'm going to put in out a little bit here where that boot folds. Select inverse. Leave quick mask and switch between my foreground and background colors and fill it in. Voila. I do the belt now. See how that when I select the belt it still selects some of the colors that are similar to it. We don't have to worry about that right now because I'm just going to edit this area. There we go. Drag the lighter gradient, switch to a darker color, went to quick mask mode. Let's put some shadow on that. Not a whole lot. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, and fill. Now we'll do the cuffs of the gloves. All right. And so I'm going to use my eyedropper tool. I'm going to click to turn this color to my foreground color. Uh, option click to turn it to my background color, click on my foreground color, make a lighter version. And I'm going to make this a little bit more orange than it was. And click on my background color to make a shadow color. Maybe not quite as orange. Okay. And now I'm going to use my gradient tool. Drag, 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 and drag. Now I've created my highlights. Let's put some shadows on there. Go into quick mask mode. And here I'm using the, the technique where I option click and drag to do freehand traces. And I want these boot cuffs to feel a little rubbery. That's why I'm doing this kind of shape. Yeah, that looks good. And select inverse. Fill. Leave quick mask. Switch to my background color. Put the background in the foreground. And fill. Looking pretty okay so far. Time to move on to the armor. Making sure to save. Magic wand tool. Let's do the armor. I'm going to go back to this now to get some highlights and some shadows. And let's drag that gradient tool a couple times to create some, like, a sense of highlight. This is where the light is interacting with this side of his body. So it's a switch to the shadows. Quick mask. I know this is really repetitive, but this that's the idea of, of letting you guys walk along with me while I do this, is that by making it repetitive, um, it's probably going to sink in a little bit more, right? What we call drilling. And let's put a little shadow underneath where his little breathing tube goes. I can if I if you screw up, you can just use the minus or rather the option click on the polygonal lasso tool, just click once. And then it turns it into the minus selection. You can cut that out. Like so you can add by holding on the shift key. And then, oh, let's get this, these guys. Let's 
select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, and fill. There we go. So I'm going to want to put an extra shadow down here in this little box area around his torso, around this area. So for that, I'm going to go into quick mask mode again, and I'm just going to trace out this area. Just to give it a little bit more of a sense of depth. Let me put another shadow right there. Select inverse. Fill. Leave quick mask. Let's pick a slightly darker color. And fill. Oh, it needs to be a little bit darker than that. And there we are. All right. Almost done. Now let's do the tubes and this torso plate middle part. And I'm going to grab few more colors off of Stinkor here. A bit of a richer orange. And more of the yellowish orange. And I'm going to darken that just a little bit for the base color. And then I'm going to lighten it back up with the highlight. And quick mask mode, because we're going to put the shadows on now. And I'm just holding down the option key after I click to do a freehand selection. Holding down the option key after I click to do a freehand selection. Put another shadow in there. And this area, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put the shadow there. Select inverse. Fill. Leave quick mask. Grab on to my background color for the shadow. Fill it in. Still not quite as dark as I would like. I'm going to darken up just a touch by adding a little bit more black to it. And there we go. We're getting a lot of different oranges on them to make these things feel like they're distinct parts. Let's grab onto this part in the middle here. And I'm going to use the same highlight and shadows. There we go. The shadow might need to be a little bit darker on this part. Quick mask, zoom in, holding down the command and plus key. I'm going to trace out areas that will be in shadow. And that. Select inverse. Fill, leave quick mask, and let's fill it in with the shadow. Well, let's go a little bit darker, even. Okay, he's coming together. Let's get the grill and little dealy bobs down there. So then I'm going to select these colors with the eyedropper tool. Option click to do the background color. And I'm going to lighten it up for my highlight. Click on the background color to create a slightly darker version for the shadow. Grab my gradient tool, drag. Drag, zoom in, go into quick mask mode by hitting the Q key, and now I can put our shadows in there. Whoops. There we go. And give these guys a little bit more three dimensionality. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, and bring my background color to the foreground, and fill. Cool. Now let's make these eyes a little bit more, give them a little bit more presence. And for that, I'm not going to do much. I'm just going to select that color with the eyedropper tool, pick a slightly whiter yellow, and then just take the gradient tool right in the center of the pupil, and right here on that one. And there we go. Oh, I realize I never did the little knobs on the top of his. Now see, I've already edited these a little bit by accident. So notice how it, it's not selecting the whole color properly. This is where the flats layer comes in. So I'm going to go to my flats layer, making sure that's selected over on the right in the flats palette. I'm going to deselect, and now I'm going to tap on that. And if you look, the flats layer is preserved. If I shut off my colors layer, you can see that I haven't done any editing there yet. You can see that the flats colors have changed quite a bit. So by selecting on the flats layer, I can select the original selections, go back to my color layer, and 
using the eyedropper tool, select my highlight and shadow colors. And now I can drop in that highlight. So the flats layer, keeping a flats layer has really saved my bacon in terms of editing files. You basically have an infinite undo there. You can always go back to your original, the original edit, um, flats trace that you did. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, and let's drop in that shadow color. Cool. And I'm going to save. Now we're going to do the color holds. Here's a neat trick I picked up. So I'm going to go to my line art layer. I'm going to create a new layer. So that it appears above the line art layer. I'm going to name this orange holds because this is going to be all, oops, misspelled it. This is going to be all of the holds for objects that are orange. Oh, I didn't do his underpants. Why didn't you guys tell me? I'm going to edit that real quick. Select, and I'll just do this real fast without talking through it because you guys have seen me do this enough times. You can just watch now. Whoops, I want to pick the shadow color. A little too dark. There we go. Now he's ready for, for the color hold. So I'm gonna to go to my color, my orange holds layer and I'm gonna zoom in. And just like doing flats, this gets this technique makes doing color holds progressively easier as you go on. So now I'm gonna be careful and just trace the lines that should be orange. Now remember, you don't have to worry so much about the color. You gotta worry about those black lines. I'm being careful not to select any areas that are going to be a different color. Like these gloves are going to have a different color hold on them. And this is a little bit of a laborious part of the process. But as I said, using the techniques that we were using earlier to, to manage flatting, you can make color holds go a lot faster too. Ooh, his underpants are going to be orange, too. Now, see, I don't have to stay right on the line when I'm doing this. I can go way out here because we're going to, col we're going to drop color onto these lines. And since transparent pixels have been preserved, I don't have to worry about painting in those areas. All I have to do is make sure that the lines themselves are contained inside the selection and no lines that I don't want to be painted on. That sentence even makes sense? That lines that I do not want to be painted on are not in the selection. Okay, so did I get all the oranges? Let's zoom out. You can always do a quick check by looking in Quick Mask. Indeed. Oh, see? The little breathing apparatus grill. Let's Trace that out. I'm just going to do a quick selection in quick mask mode. And fill. There. Only orange areas are selected. So now on my orange holds layer, I'm going to pick what I think is going to be the orange hold color. And I'm just going to fill. What? Why do I have to do that? Well, I can hide this now. That selection is still there. I can go to my line art layer and hit fill. And now I've done the holds on the lines, but that is still preserved in the layers palette. So if I ever need to call it up again, I just command click on that and it pulls up that selection. And that color hold isn't quite dark enough. So I'm going to go ahead and edit it, make it a little bit darker. And this is problematic because Stinker has got such dark skin, but uh, I'll leave that for now. So now I'm going to select inverse, go into quick mask mode, and now I don't have to worry about being so precise about editing when I'm doing his skin tones. Whoops, I screwed up there, but I'll have to fix that. Uh oh, come on Photoshop, catch up with me.
All right, there we go. Recording and editing a big Photoshop file at the same time can be problematic. Now, I'm not going to trace out his eyes. I'm going to leave that area very black, but I'm, I'm going to edit this so that the blacks on the outline of Stinkor are a little bit of a warmer black. Put a little bit of orange in it to match all the other orange colors going on here. And quick trace around here to get the shoulder. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask. Let's make a new layer. We're going to call this one black holds. And I'm going to select the color of his skin and try to darken it just enough. And I'm going to fill. Now see, there's the color holds on that layer. Hide that layer. Go to my line art layer. Fill again. And that fills the lines of his skin. Now I can select inverse, go into quick mask mode, and then I can tap on my orange holds layer, command click on the orange holds layer, fill again, and now I've got a much easier way to go in and start editing the gloves and the boots and the belt. I'm going to do some red holds now. Oh, I'm going to have to start over here. Now you can name these holds whatever you want, of course call these boot holds, gloves holds. I'm just trying to be, with, with a character with a very simple color scheme like Stinkor, I can just go orange, black, and red. Using my space bar, move around the document, holding on the space bar key and dragging like that. Zoom out. Okay. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask. Let's make a new layer called red holds. And pick the shadow color, darken it up a little bit. Fill, hide that layer, go to the line art layer, and fill. Perhaps that's not dark enough. I'm going to pick a slightly darker red. And there we go. So now I want to do the holds on his breathing apparatus and his little gray dealy doos on his chest. For that, I'm going to select inverse, go to quick mask mode, and then I'm going to tap on my black holds. I command click on the black holds layer, that is. Fill. Command click on the orange holds layer. Fill. And look at this. Now all I have to do is do this really simple selection of just this area like that. I don't have to be really careful. Select inverse, fill, leave quick mask, make a new layer called gray holds. And I'm going to select the shadow color, make it slightly darker. Fill that in, hide the gray holds layer, go to the line art layer, and fill. And now my stinkor is finished. Now, if you want your Photoshop file to be slightly, oh, I'm going to save real quick. If you want it to clean it up, make sure it's a little bit more easy to manage. You can turn these all these holds into a folder just by going to your Layers palette and um, New Group from Layers. And I call this Holds. And now, now I ha don't have so many layers to look at all the time, right? Uh, now I'm going to drop in the background. And for that, I'm going to go to my previous files. I'll show you how I've been doing this to change the background colors for a lot of these guys. So I'm going to go ahead and select, since, since Stinkor has got a lot of warm colors on them, I'm going to pick a background with cooler colors. I'm going to use that um, greenish one used on Beastman. Take a second to open up the Beastman file. These files are pretty big. Okay, there's my Beastman file. I'm going to drag him out of the tab so that I can just 
copy from one layer to the other. I'm going to grab onto the background layer, this little cloud pattern that I made a long time ago. I'm going to copy that right over to the Stinkor file, drag it down on the layers palette so it's behind him, and use the bounding box to shrink it down. And I don't want it to be exactly the same as Beast Man's. I want these all to feel like each character has their own look to their character design. So for that, I'm going to go, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to create an adjustment layer. Go to Layers Palette, New Adjustment Layer, Hue Saturation, and hit OK. And now over here in the Adjustments Palette, I can alter the color without actually changing the color of the artwork underneath. So it makes it much more editable. And I'm going to want something that's a little bit, like I said, cooler than Stinkor's color pattern or color, color scheme. I can adjust the lightness. I can make it more of a yellow. See, that won't work. Now he's not popping. But if I go to like a more of a cyan, or maybe even into purple, nah, too warm. Should be a cooler color, shouldn't it? Something like that. And now that's done. I can, oh, and I want to copy from Beastman. I've got my signature as an art file in the jdros.com for watermarking purposes. Not well, watermarking, just so people know where the image came from. Drag that over. And I'm going to move these. You can select two layers at a time and drag them. I'm going to drag them up above the, whoops, accidentally put them in the holds layer. Just drag them above the line art. And I'm going to go to the signature file, which it has transparent pixels locked. And I'm going to select the bright orange for that. And fill to change the signature color. And then same with the jdros.com. I'll just go to my text editor, the text tool rather. Up here is the color of the text. Tap on that, and that pulls up the color picker, and I can just use the eyedropper tool to pick that color. And now it's got my contact information on it. I'm going to go ahead and drag that color down, transform it down a little bit more. So I can move my signature and and uh, web address down a little bit more. Give this a little bit more room to breathe. Save, and Stinkor is done. You see, it didn't take all that long. I mean, granted, it's just a simple character sketch. But uh, I can easily go back and do more editing with this uh, by preserving. If I shut off my hue and satu saturation uh, adjustment layer, you could see that that layer is the same color as the one I dragged off of the Beastman layer. And turn on that layer and it adjusts what's underneath to look like a completely new color i can pull up those holds and edit to my heart's content and same with the flats i can use the magic wand tool to just tap on any area i want and make new adjustments to the areas that need editing thanks again for watching uh, until next time i've been jersey droz of jdroz.com jersey on the twitters okay bye